So hello, welcome to the video and welcome to Melicha Airport. Melicha is a Spanish enclave in North Africa completely surrounded by Morocco and today I'll be flying from here across the Mediterranean to Malaga. I bought the ticket with Iberia, I very much doubt it's going to be an Iberia plane, I think it might be Air Nostrum but we'll only find out when we get on board and I think it's going to be an ATR 70 or a 72, again not sure but I look forward to finding out. One of the smallest airports I've transited onto one of the shortest flights I've ever taken. Hopefully it will still be an interesting video and if you'd like to see what the experience ends up being like, stick around. I'm Matt. I've lived in five countries on four continents. I've flown over 1.4 million miles. I've visited over 100 countries, every American state, but I'm nowhere near done. So subscribe to the channel so you can come with me on my next trip. A bit of a moody sky in Melicha that afternoon as I entered the terminal. Melicha Airport services solely domestic destinations and handles perhaps a dozen departures a day, so I wasn't expecting a huge terminal, and it wasn't a huge terminal. Only Iberia operates from here, albeit through subsidiaries, so it was a very modest check-in area. I had checked in and printed a boarding pass, but as always I like to double check at the desk just in case there's some weird restriction or document check that might trip you up later. But I was all set, and as is often the case, I came to realise that arriving at an airport this small, nearly two hours before departure, was a little unnecessary. There's no status lounge at the airport, and as the departure gate area is quite modest, as you'll see later, you're not invited to go through security until it's your plane's turn to board. So the only real choice you have is to sit in the landside cafe which offered an outside patio but I chose to stay inside and enjoyed a last African beer, or at least a Spanish beer served to me in Africa. Very refreshing as it was still quite hot and was fairly humid even in early October. Up the other end of the terminal boarding was the arrival zone, purely domestic operations so no passport formalities were required, plus the security checkpoint before the departure gates. There were toilets as well as a tourist information counter and a SIM card shop, neither of which seemed to be manned at that time of year. My time in the airport cafe was made a little more interesting by the arrival of the Melicha football team who were flying to Madrid for a game the next day. They play in the fourth tier of Spanish football and when I googled them I was quite excited to see that they were actually top of their league. They won the game the next day 1-0. When the plane's departure showed up on the board, I progressed to the security point for a change of scene more than anything else. But the departure had not been announced over the PA system, even though it had been advertised on the departure board, so we were turned away. About two minutes later, the departure was announced on the PA and we were allowed through security. The departure area was indeed small. There was a small offshoot of the airport cafe and some toilets and not a lot else. The Madrid flight was boarding at the same time, and I have to say, the Melicha football team demonstrated an extremely relaxed attitude to being on time for boarding that would have driven me mad. But once they were shepherded through, it was our plane's turn to board. Passengers with status were called forward first, and it was all a bit haphazard. The seat numbers of those who'd been checked were written on a scrap of paper, which seemed guaranteed to create issues downstream, and perhaps it did, but I made sure I was noted correctly and waited until we were called to the plane. A seven-year-old ATR-72 today, and as far as I could tell, it was operated by Mel Air on behalf of Air Nostrum on behalf of Iberia. All larger cabin bags had been tagged in the terminal and we were asked to leave them on this trolley to be loaded and returned to us on the tarmac in Malaga. An indication that it would be a bus gate in Malaga, although I don't know whether airport gates can reach down as far as an ATR's door, especially as we loaded from the rear and there wasn't actually a front passenger door. Onto the plane and something I've never seen before in over 800 flights, the rows were numbered from the back to the front. I travelled on another ATR the next day, which you also boarded from the rear, but that was conventionally numbered from front to back, so this must have been a Mel Air thing rather than an ATR thing. 7A for me today. The seat was narrow with perhaps 29 inches of legroom. 
A table, as you'd expect, a literature slot holding my private eye, the safety card and a catering brochure which I'll show later. And a filthy window offering what would have been a great view of the wing, the propeller engine and the ground below had it not been absolutely filthy. The Madrid flight left, another ATR landed and then we had to wait as another one was in final approach. Our pilot kept us very well informed of all of these movements and gave the very strong impression of being quite annoyed that we might be delayed by a minute or two. Punctuality seems to be very important to Mel Air. Both newly arrived planes were actually painted in Iberia's livery unlike ours, but eventually we taxied to the runway and took off 16 minutes late. Hopefully any deductions from the pilot's bonus took account of the fact that we were ready to go at the scheduled time. Both ends of Malicha's runway point towards Morocco and a few seconds after takeoff we crossed the heavily fortified border although it was extremely disappointing that the cloud cover was so low and you could barely make it out. I'm making a video about Malicha which will show the border more clearly so look out for that. That window really was filthy. This was a trip on Spanish public transport, so at the time of travel a mask was still required on board. Not in the terminal at either end, just on the plane. No editorial from me, but rules must be followed. We were in the air for 34 minutes, but a buy on board service was still offered. Flights to Madrid are over an hour long, so there's probably more interest on those flights. I don't think anything was bought on my flight, although the crew tried valiantly. And 34 minutes later, a couple of minutes before the scheduled arrival time, we landed. The window was so filthy I didn't even try to film it. A much nicer day in Malaga than it had been in Melicha. Bags were quickly returned to us and we were quickly on the bus for the drive to the terminal. A domestic flight, so there were no entry formalities, but as most of the EU is in the Schengen zone, the majority of flights to Malaga have no formalities these days. And out to find the railway station for the short trip into the city of Malaga. I paid £85 for this Saturday afternoon flight. I had a fairly narrow window in which I could travel, so I had to take this peak time flight. You can fly for less if you are more flexible on your timings. You can also take a ferry from Malaga, a trip I covered in this video here. I enjoyed the flight. It was 34 minutes during which it's hard to distinguish your service, but it was punctual, comfortable and all things considered it was reasonable value. I only wish the windows had been cleaner and the cloud ceiling had been higher. So thanks for watching, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Please leave me a comment if you ever flown one of Iberia's subsidiaries. Please subscribe if you're new and if you'd like to support what I'm doing more directly there is a Patreon account, the link to which is in the description below. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.